Your site has too many components. Here, there's just way too many cards for the user to choose from. A great Webflow site has less components and more variants on each component. So we always wanna make the first step feel easy. Think of things like a multi-step form or most great UX has less options up front, and then after you take that first step, you dial in exactly what you want. The same can be true for our component system. We can present the user with fewer options up front, and then once they add that to the page, they can then optionally have the choice to refine the type of card they want through variants. Now, previously, if the client were to set all their links, headings, paragraphs on these cards, and then they realized the copy is a bit too long for the card they chose. With the old system, they would have to manually copy all of the heading text paragraphs into a separate card component, which let's be honest, they would usually just say this is good enough and leave it as is. But with variants, they can easily switch the style without having to manually change out all of the content. So this makes the site a lot more flexible. Now, when the content is the same and only the style is different, that's when it's good to create a variant. When the content of a component needs to be totally different, often it's better to create a separate component. So to create a variant, we just open that component and we add a new variant here, I'll call this cover, and then I can select that background image element and it was display none on the base variant. I'll switch it to block on this variant and I'll switch it to position absolute to cover the parent. And these changes I made only apply to that variant. Now, if I make any other changes to the base variant here, like let's say we change the top and bottom padding, well, that change is also going to affect our other variant here, unless we've overridden that change on the other variant, then it wouldn't affect it like so. And once we have our variant set up, we can always duplicate a variant we like to use that as a starting point for a new one or delete any variants we don't need. And we can head over to the whole component under props and we can name our variant. Now, I prefer to keep the name set as variant um, because whenever we name it too specifically, like if I say theme here, it can only really be used for colors. It doesn't make sense to also have a variant that's for a full height hero. Whereas if we name it more general, like if I just call this variant, then it can be used in a lot of different ways. And it also, the name here affects the data attribute that's applied to the component. So if we're gonna uh, apply unique animations based on the variant applied, it's much easier to just keep that variant name consistent across all our components. So if we open up this section, we'll notice we have this spacer component and its variant's name was variant. But once we go ahead and connect this spacer to a prop, on the entire parent section, uh, the name we give it here doesn't really affect the data attribute anymore. So we can give it any custom name we'd like. In this case, I've called it padding top. And that same component, I've linked it to a different variant called padding bottom. So we can give it more custom labels when it's referenced through a parent component. Another great place to use variants is for layouts. Instead of having a separate component for every possible layout on our site, we can use a single layout component and just switch its variants. So let's drop in a button wrapper and inside that, let's put our main button. And then in the next column, let's go ahead and put an image and let's choose an image here. So now I can just select this layout and I can switch its style to be stacked centered. We can do columns, columns reversed. We can do breakout where the image goes to the edge of the screen. We can also do this contained if we want it to be kind of like a card or even the actual card variant if we want it to have a background image here. And across each variant, we can choose what we want those styles to be. So here on this column for the card variant, I'm going ahead and set a unique top and bottom padding for that variant. And I've set the background image to just be absolute and full width and height. And I'm also storing the border radius and everything else on that variant. Now we can always delete the variants we don't need, um, but this is a much better system than creating a separate custom section for every possible design on your site. One of the reasons is it's difficult to predict all the ways a client might want to use a section. Maybe they want a back to uh, all case studies at the top link here. Maybe they want um, a, a subscribe to the newsletter form down here. There's just so many different ways that a layout can be used. And oftentimes what I've experienced is clients get more frustrated than anything with having having a closed component that can only be used one way when they want to use that same layout in a different way. Now, that's not to say we can't still use closed components. In fact, if I wrap this in a div, I could turn this into like a section CTA. And I find that closed components are really helpful when you want the same copy locked in across multiple pages. So if I want the heading text and the button text and link to be the same everywhere I use this CTA component, then I'd want to turn that into a closed component. But the advantage to having a layout div here 
is if we take that same section CTA and we're using it as an open component, any style changes we make um, to this card will apply both to the open versions of that layout and to the closed versions as well. So we always want to try and build our layouts as open first for the most flexibility and then turn them into closed components where needed. Now with variants, we'll often run into limitations when dealing with child components. So let's say we want the button to be outlined on this variant, but when it's above a background image, it's going to need to be solid so we can read it better. And let's say whenever we are stacking it, we don't want it to take up this much space, so it would need to be the text link variant. Now, by default, we can't really connect this variant to the parents variant. Let's take it a step further, and we have this heading inside of a slot. Let's say we want the heading to be a different font size for each variant of this layout. So on the card one, the heading's really large. On the contained one, the heading can be much smaller. And on this full one, the heading can be more of a medium size. So when we do that here, what we're saying is we want the heading to be one size outside of the layout. And when used inside of the layout, it can receive the size from that layout. Now, we can, of course, always override that if we want, but by default, it's going to inherit from the layout. And the way we can do that is with variable modes. So if we have a mode for all of our different heading styles here, we can say on the base mode, uh, no variable mode is applied here, so it'll just inherit from its parent. But on all the other modes, we can override that heading variable mode here. And we can do the same for a paragraph, for buttons, for any kind of other element. And that means we can say for this variant of our layout, we can set the heading uh, to one font size. We can set the paragraph to a different font size. And for each variant, we kind of just change that to what we want it to be for that variant. And so this gives your client the most control of only adding the elements they actually want or need into the component, but you as the designer, the control to define what those elements look like across the different variants of the component. So that's an overview of some ways you can use variants to enable the most flexibility with also the most global consistency throughout your project.